Welcome to this video in which we will use the relationship between the bending moment and the shear force, uh, particularly as they are um, shown in uh, shear and moment diagrams, to uh, compute shear and moment diagrams for a beam that has concentrated loads. So you can see we have this beam. It has uh, concentrated loads. And again, our goal is to find the uh, shear force diagram. And from the shear force diagram, we can actually compute the bending moment diagram. Now, this will involve some integrals, but for this particular example, at least they're easy integrals. So hopefully that doesn't frighten you away. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define and find the reaction forces at A and B. So we have F. A Y F A X and F B Y. We have no horizontal component for this force because B is on point B is on rollers. And then if we um, sum all of the forces in the x direction, it's clear from this that F A X is equal to zero. And so that's actually the last time we'll talk about FAX. So the next thing we need to do is uh, we'll find FBY, and we'll do this by summing the moments about A and setting them equal to 0. So the moments about A, I have this 12,000 pound force acting with a moment arm of 6 feet. And this is going to be negative because it's inducing a clockwise rotation. So this is minus 12,000 pounds times 6 feet. Then I have a 4,000 pound force, which again is inducing a clockwise rotation. It's acting with a moment arm of 6 feet plus 4 feet. So that's 10 feet. Then we have minus 16,000 pounds. And again, it's negative because it's inducing a clockwise rotation. And it's acting with a moment arm of 18 feet. And finally, we have FBY, which is positive because it's uh, inducing a counterclockwise rotation. And it acts with a moment arm of 20 feet. And these guys all sum to 0. And when I solve this for FBY, I get then that FBY is 20,000 pounds. And I'll leave the detailed solving to you. You can check and make sure I got it right. And then um, we have the sum, in, uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to 0. Well, we have F A Y minus 12,000 pounds minus 4,000 pounds minus 16,000 pounds plus 20,000 pounds. That's this guy up here, FBY. And this is equal to 0. And solving for FAY, we get then that uh, FAY is 12,000 pounds. OK, so there we have it. Those are the reaction forces. So the next thing we need to do is actually find a shear force diagram. And we'll do that by uh, drawing a portion of the free body diagram uh, with the idea that we will cut the free body diagram at some point x. OK. So if we start off with x between uh, 0 and 6, then our free body diagram is going to look like this. And we're looking for the shear force. And if you recall from the shear force, the videos that introduced shear force, we would draw it like this. And then we also have uh, FAY going up in this direction. And this is 12,000 pounds. And um, 
to uh, get the shear, the, the value of V, we just get the sum of uh, forces in the vertical direction and set that equal to zero. Um, so we have minus V plus 12,000 pounds is equal to zero, from which we get V is equal to 12,000 pounds. And again, this is for the case where x is between uh, 0 and 6 feet. Okay, so um, if we look at the case where x is between 6 feet and 10 feet, whoops, 6 feet is less than x, which is less than 10 feet. Um, Again, hopefully you can see from the way we've been doing this that V um, will just be the sum of the forces from the left, or the vertical forces from the left side up to the point X. And so in this case, we'll have V of X. It will be FAY, which is 12,000 pounds, minus 12,000 pounds, this guy up here, and that's equal to zero. Okay, so between six feet and ten feet, uh, the shear force internal to this beam is zero. Okay, um, so if we look at the case where we're between ten feet and eighteen feet, so we have ten feet, so less than x, which is less than 18 feet, we'll have V of X, we'll have the 12,000 pounds minus the 12,000 pounds uh, minus 4,000 pounds. And this just gives us minus 4,000 pounds. Okay. And similarly, um, if we look at a value of x between 18 feet and 20 feet, without going through all of the work, because I'm actually running out of both time and space, 18 feet is less than x, which is less than or equal to 20 feet, we will have that v of x is equal to uh, minus 16,000 feet. Okay. Whoops, I missed adding in the 4,000, I'm sorry. Let's try this one more time. This is minus 20,000 feet. Okay, so what we have then is that between 0 and 6 feet, V of X has this value. Between 6 and 10 feet, it has um, this value of 0. Between 10 and 18 feet, it has this value. And between 18 and 20 feet, it has this value. So I can plot this V of X as a function of X. And I've done that. And I get a graph that looks like this. And so you can see that between um, 0 and 6 feet, this is 6 feet, it's uh, 12,000. Then between um, 6 feet and 10 feet, it's 0. Uh, between 10 feet and 18 feet, it's minus 4,000. And between 18 and 20, it is minus 20,000. Okay, so we have then our graph for V of X. And now we need to find the bending moment. And it turns out that we can use the relationship between uh, shear force and bending moment that is the following. Let me uh, create a new workspace to show you this because it's so cool. Okay, so what we have then is if we want the bending moment at some point in X, it's the integral from the left edge of our beam, which here we'll say goes starts at zero, 
2x of the shear force. And I'll explain the x primes here in just a minute. Another way of writing this is that the shear force diagram, this V of x, is the derivative of the bending moment at x. Okay, So basically V of x is the slope of M of x. M of x is the area under V of x from 0 up till x. So just to make sure that's clear, um, this turns out to be a uh, topic that sometimes can be confusing. If I draw V of x prime, so I'm just using x prime as my uh, independent variable, and I have some V of x prime. Okay, so this would be V of x prime. If I have a particular value of x, so this would be my particular value of x, and I want to find m of x, well, that would be the area under the shear force uh, plot or diagram between 0 and x. That's basically what this integral is saying. And the reason for the x prime and the dx prime is that x, the point that I'm actually interested in, is my limit. So I don't want to use it as a variable of integration. Uh, I've seen textbooks that do that, and it generally leads to huge amounts of confusion on everybody's part. So I'm going to take the approach that's initially more confusing, but eventually much clearer. So this x prime is a variable of integration. It's just saying that to get m of x, I take the area under v of x from 0, or v of x prime, from 0 out to x. And again, v of x prime is just v of x, but I've replaced x by x prime. Okay, so hopefully um, you're uh, thoroughly not confused. So um, it looks uh, sadly like we're already out of time. So in part two of this video, we'll actually compute m of x for the v of x that we just um, that we just uh, found, so stay tuned for the next video.